Hi everybody, this is Frank Clifford and welcome to Frank Answers. Keep the questions coming in. I'll do as many as I can in the weeks ahead. Um, in this one, I'll be looking at a question from Kushi, which is quite a common question about um, the links to emotionality. And her question was, um, why am I so emotional when I have the sun in Capricorn and the moon in Virgo? Well, this question can be answered in lots of different ways, particularly as we have a birth chart in front of us. But one of the things I really want to say is from, from the beginning is that no sign or no element like water uh, corners the market on emotions, on feelings, on sensitivity. We're all 70, 80 percent water. We're all connected on some level to our feelings, our emotional life, but we have a birth chart that emphasizes certain things that we're here to do. So the idea that some of us perhaps are more emotional than others, it may come down to the fact that some of us are more clued up or keyed in to the more emotional aspects of who we are or bring them to the surface. Some of us may have experiences where we're extremely sensitive, but not so sensitive to other people or being empathic and connecting to other people's sensitivities, for instance. So in a birth chart, to understand um, a instant connection to the water feeling emotional realm, we'd look at the signs that are under the water element, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. And you can see in this chart, we've got Cancer on the ascendant. So that moon in Virgo is the chart ruler. That's the first thing to say about that. The midheaven as well here is in the sign of Pisces. And so the two public persona angles are in water signs, suggesting that other people may see Kushi as a uh, an emotionally driven person who's out to care, out to look after, to take care, to rescue, uh, to be there for people. That's one, one way we're looking at it. But the other thing to remember is that the earth signs are emotional too. Everybody's emotional. But earth signs have a particular contract in some way, particularly when you've got the sun in Capricorn. The contract is to be useful, productive, stiff up a lip, go in and, and uh, organize things and just get things done. And the moon in Virgo as well is very keyed in to taking care in a practical level, taking care, okay, if you're upset, what can I do to help? How can I help reorganize this or help you clean up the mess or the difficulty here? Uh, let's analyze it and get to the heart of it. So the sun and moon have a lot to say about the vocation. The sun is really what we've signed up to do. And the moon is very much that uh, reigning need, the primary need. It's what Noel Till used to call the reigning need in that sense of what overrides everything. And it's a final point with this, really, that the earth signs um, care and get in touch with their emotional self through the practical life, through the physical world, through the material, uh, through their bodies, ideally through sensuality. That's how they access their emotions. But the key is not to look at somebody's chart and say, oh, you have a moon Uranus conjunction here. You are detached from your emotions. That may or may not be the case. We might find somebody with the moon in Cancer on the Ascendant, who's also detached from their emotions. Um, very much depends on the process of growing up and learning and the people around you and developing that. So uh, there's no simple formula here. We might look at the moon opposite Saturn and say that, um, oh, that might be rather emotionally distant or cut off. And again, we don't know that for sure by any means. And what Kushi is telling us uh, in her question is that she's highly emotional. We know that the moon in Virgo is the caretaker. The moon generally is the caretaker, the womb, the container, holding and holding people, holding situations. The moon in Virgo wants to be useful in that, as I've said. The moon opposite Saturn wants to be useful in offering people structure and help in areas of 
chaos or um, disillusionment um, or loss of belief, Saturn in Pisces. And the moon Uranus as well may be very aware of the emotional realm and know when to draw back, to cut off from that at times or to save oneself. I often think of moon Uranus as having a safety valve, having a button there you can detach if you need to, knowing that things could be overwhelming unless you're able to do that. So yes, highly emotional people don't have overly watery charts with lots of Cancer, Scorpio or Pisces. Uh, and we think of the planets that are watery in the chart. We think of the moon, we think of Neptune, and we think of Pluto as well. And these often add uh, emotional realms to the chart, but you'll see many, many people that don't have quote unquote emotional watery charts with strong water planet placements like the moon, Neptune or Pluto. And yet they're driven by emotion. Uh, it, they're very in touch with the emotional realm. So uh, that's, uh, that's um, something we learn very early on. So we can't expect that to be um, a simple formula in that way. Okay, I do hope that's helped um, and I look forward to answering more of your questions soon.